So every time we do Ignite events, we invite not just the students and not just the alumni, but also our, our colleagues to give talks. So today we only have one faculty member representing the computer science department to give the presentation, but this is the case where quantity doesn't matter because of quality. So bracket <laughs> presentation. He's the only one who writes his uh, who has his slides in Docker Racket. He is, he is, he is which, for the compiler for which he wrote himself. <laughs> Second, he is going to talk about yeast. What, what can be more exciting? <laughs> Okay, so uh, this is this is right. There, there's a couple of titles for this talk. One of this is um, uh, how to make uh, interesting new friends and then kill them. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I decided not to go with that one. I decided to go with the foundation of civilization. How you can recapitulate the uh, the sort of foundation of civilization. Right here we go. We're going to take something which is more or less largely inedible. Right, it's basically glue. Actually, it's gluten, which, despite what you may have heard, is Amazingly wonderful. If you don't have celiac disease, gluten is a very good thing. And turn it into that thing. Okay, great. So that was bread. I hopefully you saw how delicious that bread looked. Here's what you have. Here's what I put in my uh, my bread. It's flour, it's water, and it's salt. Those are the only things uh, that I buy, and I don't pay very much. Um, here's what you don't need in your bread. You don't need any conditioning agents. You don't need any sugar. You definitely don't need any azodicarbonamide, which sounds like something you would shout as you jump out of an airplane. <laughs> Bread. The next time you buy some bread in the grocery store, look at that. It's really bad. The stuff I put in there. Okay, but here's what you do need, right? I, I, you notice I didn't list this guy. Where did the yeast and the bacteria come from? Well, it turns out that you can actually understand why it was that people 300 years ago were pretty darn sure that life just sort of magically arose from whatever just happened to be there. Because it turns out it's very easy to find and sort of cultivate this yeast uh, yourself. All you need to do is make a nice little home and then pretend you have the yeast. Right? And then it will sort of magically appear. Here's how you perform this process. Okay, you start with a bowl and a fork. And maybe some other stuff there. You don't need it. <laughs> <laughs> There's my yeast. Uh, this yeast is all grown up, and we're just about to dump half of it down the drain, poor thing. Uh, but that's life. When you're raising yeast, you make a lot of extra, uh, which is good. You can you can give some away to your friends, or you can pour it down the drain. Otherwise, you wind up with a lot of yeast. Okay, the bowl now has water in it. It's <laughs> 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 a good chance to take a deep breath. <laughs> Forty grams. That's true. Okay, so here's my yeast. This yeast is uh, about a, a day since I last fed it, and you can see it looks nice and happy. It's nice and oozy and sticky, and it's got lots of little bubbles in it uh, from all the little yeast and bacteria uh, making uh, carbon dioxide. And uh, it turns out, oh, we don't actually need very much of the yeast. That's really all we need. Uh, so out of 100 grams, we only need about 20 of the yeast, and the rest, as I said, is pork down. <laughs> Better being poured down the drain, probably right, than, than actually going into the oven, man. That's the horrible part. All right, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> then you have to stir it up. We're up to 60 grams <laughs> The next part is not going to surprise you. You add some flour. And you've been talking a lot about flour, and you probably want some nice hard spring flour, but really, it doesn't, I don't think it's Anyway. Uh, and then you need to make up your flour, and then you get some nice uh, yeasty stuff, and then you dump it back in a glass, uh, and you put it up on a shelf. And uh, if you if you have the yeast, this is how you make, keep the yeast happy. But if you don't have the yeast, as I said before, you can just kind of do this, just start doing it. Actually, it'll start growing really fast at first, and you'll go, oh my gosh, I'm amazing. And then you smell it, and you're like, well, that's horrible. It smells like sweaty socks. And if you have some persistence, then you don't just end the experiment there, uh, after a while it actually kind of settles down and turns into some uh, some very nice yeast. It still is not, <clears throat> honestly, the most attractive of your friends, I, I, will, I will say that. <laughs> but it's very loyal. Uh, and it can be used uh, to bake uh, some very delicious uh, bread. And uh, if you actually want to bake the
the bread. I think I would unhesitatingly recommend Chad Robertson's uh, tartine bread, which is an amazing way to make bread. And that's all I have to say. Thank you very much.